somehow I had managed to piss off the NRA and PETA. <laughs> Who gets caught in that pickle? I managed to do it. So anyhow, you say, what do you do in a situation like this? Well, I'll tell you what I did. The first thing that I did was I went to my farm up north and I climbed up into the highest tree stand that I had to where I could get above and get clear. You see, in hunting, it always used to take place on the ground. But over time, we've realized that when you get up into a tree, you gain a sight advantage, you gain a scent advantage, and you can start to relax a little bit. And the same thing's true in business, the same thing's true in relationships. When we're down here, right, when we're down in the ego, we're stuck in our ego. We can't focus on what we want, which is that target, right? That target is to change the world of hunting forever. So I climbed up into that tree with an old Blackberry 8600, slowest internet ever. You know, I'm sitting there and I'm looking through these emails. And as I'm going through these emails, I notice something. There were a few names that didn't seem to fit the rest of these names. So with really slow internet, I'm able to search through and figure out that these were lobbyists. And then I started to say, aha, maybe there's a way to fix this situation. And I know a lot of people would freak out when you realize you have lobbyists. And these are not like soft lobbyists. These guys take senatorial candidates and they crush them in a day type lobbyists. And they were not thinking non-fatal with me. No, they wanted to kill me. The subject lines in these emails read things like, we need to STOP capital letters David Farbman, or we need to kill this initiative. I thought, man, this is not great, but now at least I know who these people are. You see, when you're stressed or scared, a lot of the time it's because you don't have clarity on what the targets are that help you get to the big target that you're after.